So good afternoon and welcome to Gary Crosby. So Gary, I know that you are a leadership and business coach today, but this isn't what you've always done. So tell us what your background is, please. Yeah, that's right, Melanie, and good afternoon to you. Um, I have uh, spent most of my adult life in the Air Force and uh, had an absolute great time gallivanting around the world, flying in aeroplanes that were gathering intelligence, which was uh, great fun. And uh, when I got to the point where I didn't want to be in the Air Force anymore, I left to join industry, where I did a bit of sales and marketing and some strategy work before deciding that I didn't really think corporate life was for me and becoming a coach. So that's how I ended up where I am today with my Action Coach franchise. Excellent. So some great leadership background then. So what does great leadership look like to you? I think great leaders have got to show a lot of energy and passion. They've got to be able to convey the purpose of their business really, really effectively. And uh, if they can't show that path towards something that's more worthwhile or better, then uh, from my perspective, they're not really fulfilling their role as, uh, as a leader. I think about Lord Coe in the 2012 Olympics, you know, that fantastic passion he had for creating something that was great for, uh, for the UK. And I also think that leaders have got to uh, show a fantastic way of connecting with people. So if I think back to one of the best bosses that I ever had, um, a wing commander who ran one of the squadrons that I was flying on, he had this unerring ability to make you feel like you were the most important person in the world while you were talking to him. And that is a very rare characteristic. Uh, I don't think it's something that can be taught. So you've got to have energy and passion and the ability to connect. Great. Some great tips there. So what do you interpret by self-leadership and how do you personally practice this? Uh, there's a few things I think in self-leadership. First of all, you've definitely got to have a sense of independence. You've got to feel in your own self that you're able to make your own way and create your own set of circumstances. So for me, obviously, as a, as a business owner uh, like you, Melanie, you've got no boss, you've got nobody telling you what to do or which direction to go in. So you've got to have that real independence of thought. Um, and you've got to have that self-reliance as well. You've got to realize that um, the things that you're putting in place, the things that you've got control of, you're creating your own circumstances again. And that's what I try to do. I try to think of myself as the person who has got complete accountability and responsibility for the path I'm taking. Mm -hmm. Great. So I know that today you're working pretty much on your own. I know that you work alongside other people. But in the yeah. past, you've been responsible for managing, leading a, n a big number of people. So mm. what signs of leadership did you look for from your staff um, within, within the organizations that you've worked for? So I think uh, the best uh, opportunity for me to do that was when I was the commanding officer of one of the RAF's uh, frontline flying squadrons. And with 175 people to look after, I, first of all, I recognized that not everybody wanted to be super ambitious. So that was the first thing. But when I spotted people who did say to me that they wanted to get on, what I was looking for was was a few things. The so first of all is that ability to have accountability and ownership and responsibility for the things that they've got to do. So I don't want anybody at that, at that stage um, demonstrating some poor behaviors by blaming others or you know, dying things if, if things aren't going particularly well. So that that's really, really important. And the second thing is that energy and passion that I talked about. You can see that they're keen to, to, to get to the end goal. And the one thing that I really was very keen to find was that sense that they were willing to accept additional responsibility. So going a little bit above and beyond, you know, sometimes when you've got a Christmas party or a social event, you just want someone to step forward and say, I'll do that. So those leadership qualities and that willingness to accept a bit of extra responsibility was always key in my search for the next group of leaders. Mm. That's great. So obviously we're going through a lot of change at the moment, a paradigm shift in the word of, words yeah. of uh, Stephen Covey. Um, but what changes do you anticipate in working practices over the next 12 months and maybe beyond that? Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, I, I'm getting a bit tired, if I, if I may be so bold, uh, with this idea of the new normal that I've heard a lot of people talking about. But I'm um, encouraging people whether they're leaders or managers or employees, to think about what I've called OBFs, which is outcome-based freedoms. Because actually, now is a great time to start thinking about how to shape your workforce in a way that is focused on the outcomes. Now, of course, all business owners have always done this in a way, but they should start asking questions like, why do staff need to commute for a couple of hours every day? Why do they need to sit at this desk 
you know, face to face for the eight hours a day? Why do they need face time in order to progress? Because if actually employees are asking for outcome based freedoms, they'd be delivering the outcome of the company wherever they are. Mm. So that's an important shift that I can see coming. Absolutely. I love that. And I know that's a, a, a phrase that you've coined yourself and that you've uh, shared in some of your social media yes. posts recently. So that's very good. Yeah. 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 So how will you lead and manage yourself and some of your clients, the business owners uh, that you work with through this change? So, so for me, I've been trying over the last eight or nine weeks now to say to clients, um, yes, you are in a very difficult situation. For most people, their businesses have been profoundly affected by this. But the right thing to do here is to look for opportunities and then lead your staff and your team towards those opportunities. Because it's no surprise that some businesses have found different ways of doing things. They found different products or different services that they can offer. And the good leaders my clients amongst them definitely will be urging their teams to look for those additional opportunities. So we might see businesses, I think, coming out of this in a slightly different shape with a slightly different feeling to them, offering their services in a different way. That's going to be really important in the next few weeks. Yeah, no, I can I can imagine that. And, you know, as organisations are pivoting, some of the individuals within those organisations are also going to need to pivot and adjust. So what skills do you perceive will be the most important to kind of help us through this period? Well, it's a skill that's relevant now, but I would say it's also relevant at any point in, in your life, whether that's in your personal life or in your business life. And, and I call it not time management, but managing yourself through time. Mm -hmm. um, and this is all about really beginning to understand how you use your time. So um, going back, you mentioned Stephen Covey at the beginning, but you know, I always urge my clients to try and determine the difference between what's really urgent and what's really important in their business, because many people respond to other people's ideas of urgency, like them calling and them demanding time and stealing time off you. So there's that to think about. Um, and I also say to people, one of the really good things you can do is try to put some immovable objects in your diary. And um, I know we've talked about this before in planning events. Uh, and that is the idea that, you know, rather like your child's gym class on a Friday evening, which happens regardless of, of any other thing in the diary, what could you put in your working week that would always be there and would always be honoured. Because every time you put something in and then don't honour it, you lose that bit of time. So removable objects mean you're just going to focus on something, it's going to be there for an hour and you're just going to get something done. How disciplined do you have to be to get something like that done? So that's a really important quality for me. Great. Well, thank you very much for sharing your insights with me today. Very useful. Obviously, none of us have a crystal ball, but um, I'm sure that a lot of the things that you've you've spoken about today will be extremely useful to uh, to help us go forward. I love the immovable objects. I shall certainly be putting some of those in my own diary. Um, yes. And also the outcome-based freedoms. I think that's a great concept, and we should certainly all be thinking in those terms as well. So thank you very much, Gary. My pleasure, Molly. My pleasure.